Hello, today we are going to take a look at an AP free response question involving cones. So here it is. A container has the shape of an open right circular cone, as shown above. The height of the container is 10 centimeters and the diameter is 10 centimeters. Water in the container is evaporating so that its depth, h, is changing at a constant rate of negative 3 tenths centimeters per hour. Now what's nice about questions on the AP exam is if you're going to use a geometric formula, they'll give it to you. So we see that the volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h. So that's nice. And then when I see question A where it says find the volume V of water in the container when h equals 5, you think that's really nice because all they're asking is for the volume of a cone and they give me the formula. So let's just plug in a few numbers and chug away. So 1 third pi r squared, the height is 5. Uh-oh, but what's the radius when the height is 5? So when the height is 10, the radius is 5 because half of the diameter. But what about when the height is down to 5 centimeters? So now it's an important thing to remember about cones. If you look at a side view of it and you look at one half, you can imagine these right triangles. Where on this first one I have a right triangle with a height of 10 and then this top leg is 5 centimeters. So that's standing for this side view of the cone. Well then I can look at a smaller right triangle. This one with some undetermined radius and some undetermined height. Both of these form right triangles and shape share this bottom angle, which means they have angle-angle similarity. They are similar triangles, which means the ratio between the two legs of the big triangle is equal to the ratio of the smaller triangle. So 5 over 10 equals r over h. 1 over 2 is equal to r over h. This idea of proportionate side lengths, proportional triangles, similar triangles in a cone is very important. It's a big thing to keep in mind with these cone problems in calculus. And how does this help us? Well, if I multiply by h, I have h over 2 equals r, which means if I'm trying to find r when h is 5, I have 5 over 2 equals r, or 2.5 is equal to r. And with that, I have enough information to plug in, and I get a volume is equal to 1 third pi times 2.5 squared times 5. I can now work through and multiply this, and I go 2.5 times 2.5 times 5 times 1 third, and I get 10.42, or I should go to three decimals, and I get 10.417 times pi centimeters cubed because of volume. Now, of course, because this is AP, you could stop up above and not even simplify and give that answer. I could also multiply in pi, but I would continue to remember to round to three decimal points. Okay, so we found the volume there. Not so bad. What about part B? Part B says, find the rate of change of the volume of water in the container with respect to time when h is 5 centimeters. Indicate units of measure. So the thing to focus in on here is it says find the rate of change of the volume with respect to time. Okay, so I'm seeing how volume changes as time changes. The rate of change of volume as the rate of change of time. You need to start thinking calculus here and you see that phrasing and you should immediately think dvdt. How does volume change with respect to time? You're trying to find that when h is equal to 5. And as you're doing that, when you're thinking dvdt, you remember I'm given another rate of change. Up here, the depth h is changing at negative 3 tenths. So that thinking calculus makes you think of dh dt is equal to negative 3 tenths. So you have these two different rates, and how can you relate them? How can you relate those two variables of v and h? Go back to the equation they give you. They tell you that volume is equal to 1 third times pi r squared h. And you know that if you take the derivative of that with respect to time, 
you're going to get a DVDT and a DHDT. Notice R is also a variable here. That is also changing as the height and volume change. So if you take the derivative of that, you're going to get a DRDT along with a product rule between R squared and H. But I don't know anything about DRDT. Nor in this problem does it tell me how the radius is changing. So I want to somehow get rid of that R so I only have an H and a V. This is where the similar triangles is once again very important. Because look back at the proportion we set. 1 over 2 equals R over H. And notice how we simplified to H over 2 is equal to R. I have an expression where R is equal to H over 2 which means I can go back to my equation and substitute in for r with h over 2. Ah, very nice. Now my equation is in terms of only two variables, h and v. So I can simplify that a little more. Um, 1 third pi h cubed over 4, which finally gives me volume is equal to pi over 12 times h cubed. All right, well now I need dvdt and dhdt, so I take the derivative with respect to time of both sides. On the left, it's dvdt. On the right, pi over 12 is a constant, so I pull that out. 3h squared is a power rule, but I have implicit differentiation, so the dhdt pops out there as well. And then I can clean that up a little bit. 3 over 12 reduces to 4. So pi over 4 times h squared times dh dt. And I'm trying to find dv dt, so let's just plug in what we know now. Pi over 4 times 5 squared, because we're finding when height is equal to 5. And then I'm told that dh dt is negative 3 tenths. Okay, so I have 5 squared, which is 25 times negative 3, so that's negative 75 pi. And on bottom, I have 4 times 10, so 75 pi over 40. Of course, you could reduce that if you want, but let's just leave it there. Sometimes you want to be careful when you're reducing on the AP test, just because you don't need to, so you don't want to risk a mistake in the reducing. The correct units. That's how the volume is changing with respect to time. So it's volume, centimeters cubed, per what unit of time are we dealing with? Per hour. Notice up there in the question, it's per hour. Okay, so there we go. We found the rate of change of the volume. The last part of it, C. Show that the rate of change of the volume of water due to evaporation is directly proportional to the exposed surface area of the water. And what is the constant of proportionality? Okay, so I zero in on the fact that it says the rate of change is directly proportional to the surface area. Directly proportional. You should think of this idea. Y equals K times X. If Y and X are directly proportional, they are related in that way. They have direct variation. Where K is the constant of variation, or the constant of proportionality, as they say in this question. If the question had said that the rate of change in the surface area are inversely proportional, you would have thought y equals k divided by x, put in your variables there, and then solve. Okay, but since it's directly proportional, we have y equals k times x. Also, we're not solving for y and x here. What are our two variables? Well, one of them is the rate of change of the volume of water. So I have dv dt, and that equals, well, we already solved for that. That's pi over 4 h squared dh dt. Okay, that's the rate of change of the volume. And then it's directly proportional to the surface area of the water. And the surface area of the water is just this circle at the top. So the surface area is pi r squared. Easy as that. Okay, but then you take a pause, and dv dt is in terms of h. I would like the surface area to be in terms of the same variable. So instead of r, I'm going to put our h over 2 from our proportion over here that we're using once again. 
See how important to remember those similar triangles and cones? Without remembering that, we couldn't have done any of these problems. But by remembering them, it makes all three of these questions kind of easy. So back to our surface area, you can simplify that. You get pi h squared divided by 4. So let's put it into our little directly proportional equation where we have our volume, pi over 4 h squared dh dt is equal to k times the surface area, which is pi over 4 h squared. And they ask for that constant of proportionality, so we need to solve for k. If I divide by pi over 4 h squared, notice what happens on the left side. It cancels out, leaving me just that dh dt is equal to k. And what does dh dt equal? It's told, negative 3 over 10. So I have negative 3 over 10 is equal to k, and that's my constant of proportionality. Very good, and we got the three questions answered. Big thing, once again, remember if you have a right circular cone, you can imagine this cross section of similar right triangles, which will allow you to set up a proportion between the radius and height of the cone.